Hey math students, as long as we're at it, let's take a look at converting improper fractions back to mixed numbers. Improper, so what do I mean by an improper fraction? Um, I mean the top of this fraction is larger than the bottom. Well, who cares about the top being larger than the bottom? Why does that matter? Um, that matters because it tells me that I have more than one whole thing. What do you mean, Kate? Well, let's take a look. Let's draw out, for example, seven halves. So if I have a half of something, there's one half half of a pie, for example. Now um, I'm going to get two halves. There's two halves of a pie. I hope everybody here knows that two halves make a whole. Um, and then I could do three halves and four halves and five halves and six halves and seven halves. So I have more than one whole pie. Uh, I have seven halves, I have an improper fraction. The top, the numerator, is bigger than the bottom, the denominator. Therefore, I have more than one whole thing. Okay, hope that makes sense. So now there's two ways I can talk about this. I could count the number of halves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves. That's where I got this number. Or I could talk about the whole things separately from the fractions. It's not that one way is better than the other. It's just two different ways to talk about it. So let's talk about whole things. How many whole pies do I have? Well, let's get another color here so we can see. Here's a whole pie. Uh, there's another one. And there's another one. That's three whole pies. But, you know, I don't have enough over here to make a whole pie. That's still a fraction. That's still one half. So two different ways to talk about the same number, um, equivalent number, seven halves and three and a half are equivalent. Um, they're equal to each other. Uh, one of them is called an improper. One of them is called a mixed number. And you'll notice the mixed number had that whole number portion and then the proper fraction here. It will end up being proper because the remaining leftover piece will be something less than one. So three and a half in this case. Okay, now obviously I'm not going to draw out a diagram every single time I need to convert. So what could I do to do this mathematically? Well, what does this mean? Literally seven over two. We know that a fraction bar literally means one of the mathematical operations. It means divide. A fraction is an act of division. So you want to turn that improper into a mixed number? Do the implied division. Take seven and divide by two. And here's a big hint. Don't do it in your calculator. If you're looking for a fractional answer, it's easier by hand. So I'm going to do seven divide divided by 2. And if I use a long division house for that, that turns into 2 into 7. Remember that the order switches with long division. Okay. So whatever number was on top, the numer numerator will end up in the house. And whatever number was on the bottom, the denominator is outside there. I'm going 2 into 7. So of course 2 goes into 7 three times, but it doesn't go in perfectly. There's some remainder. There's leftover. There's one leftover. So how many whole twos did I get out of there? Three whole tools, twos. So my whole number will be three. And then what did I have remaining? Well, I had one piece remaining, so I'll have one leftover. One leftover of what size? Of size half. And I just make this nice little circle with my long division, and I get three and one half uh, from seven halves. There you go. That's it. My an answer that I get when I do the division three is the whole number portion, and my remainder will be remaining in fractional form. And you'll notice that the denominator didn't change here. It was halves before, it's still halves. Okay, so great, I get three and one half. Okay, let's erase this and try the others now my faster way. Okay, the red pen is kind of disconcerting. Let's grab blue, y'all. <laughs> Okay, so 5 over 3 means the same as 5 divided by 3, literally 5 divided by 3. So if I wanted to do that with long division, I'd take the 3 out. It'd be the same as 3 into 5. So how many times does 3 go into 5? It goes in once. Take out that 3 that I just used up, and I have a remainder of 2. So I just found out I have one whole thing and 2 remaining as pieces of thirds, 2 thirds. So 1 and 2 thirds. And um, just to demonstrate that, of course, that's true, let's try drawing something that has five-thirds. So there's one-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds would make one whole thing. One-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds would make one whole thing. Now let's keep going because I wanted five-thirds. Five-thirds, 
or four thirds, sorry, and then five thirds. Now one third, two third, three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, and look at that. Indeed, that looks like one whole thing and two thirds. Of course, I could express it either way. Okay, great, one more. 18 fifths is the same as 18 divided by five, quite literally. It really is the same exact thing. 18 divided by five. So I will do it like this, five into 18. Of course, five goes into 18 three times, and three fives is 15. If I pull out what I've used up, I've got three left. And so this three up here will be my whole number three, and how many are remaining in fractional form? Three things are still of size fifth. Okay, so I have three whole things and three fractional pieces of size fifth. Okay, I hope that that makes sense to you. If you have any questions about that or any other uh, GED math topic, Feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.